The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. In today's episode, we're going to build a switch, a very complicated switch. To keep things on, that shouldn't be on for a long time. Sounds good? Then don't switch off. <laughs> Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So the other day at my hackerspace, I had an idea for a switch. Uh, we were talking about security on systems and people turning things on and then walk off and talk with friends and drink a beer while the machine runs haywire, sets things on fire, breaks stuff. Yeah, that's something you don't want. I thought about it a bit further and thought, okay, there, it might be cool to have a switch that's constantly keeping the system alive uh, once you push a button. But then I was thinking of one of the greatest hacker that is out there and that's Huma Simpson, who used a drunken bird thing contraption to push a button constantly. I guess any hacker in the hackerspace is also able to do that. Then I thought, hmm, why not have 16 buttons instead and randomly choose the next button that you have to switch. For the whole thing to work, I thought it would be best to use a proto board and just put on a lot of buttons on there. Uh, first I was undecided if I would use four LEDs in one button, but if you have something in the center that's pushing the button, you also have a darker spot. That's why I went for four buttons and one LED in the center. So this is what the project is all about. So the idea is pretty simple. I'm using NeoPixel strips for that. Then I also need 64 buttons and I'm just using the cheap ones that I have a lot of. Uh, in this case, they are white. Because I used the proto board, I also had to solder the button matrix together and I really would have appreciated to make a big PCB, but it doesn't really make sense. And I had this piece of proto board lying around from another project. That's why it's purple. 64 buttons means of course 256 solder joints. You have to straighten up the buttons to do that. I then cut the PCB to make it fit the case that I've already printed. And of course I had to cut off the edges. The LED strips were simply glued on. After drilling the holes for the screws into the PCB, I then heated the screws with a soldering iron to make it go into the plastic of the case. Before wiring everything up, I had to drill a hole to make the cable go somewhere. I had to directly connect the buttons in a row and then use diodes to prevent ghosting on the columns. So working on the case was a bit more trickier than I would have liked. First I worked with Inkscape to make the layout of the proto board because I wanted to know where the buttons go. And from there I took the dimensions and designed the case around it. When I showed some pictures, um, people were saying, hey, that looks like a MIDI controller. And I thought, hmm, might be nice to have some knobs on there. That's why I added the separate box. It's the orange one. I also wanted to play around with multicolor prints with a single extruder. So the trick here is to print the white first and then print the orange on top, but have 
um, a cutout where the white would be and um, print without support material. Once I had the LEDs connected and the keyboard, I then progressed with the code. So let's take a look at that. Want to build the project in this episode? Want to download the code? Find the parts list? Want to ask a specific question and know this host will answer it? Simply take out your phone and point your camera at this QR code. This will take you right to all the details you need to get started. We'll see you on the Element 14 community. So as a test piece, I'm going to use these lights. They are powered, I think it's 12 volts, much better than just using mains. This is, also a nice feature that I can turn it off. The plan here is to use this device to turn something on. That should be fairly easy. Um, there's a pin somewhere that's connected to the relay board. We just have to turn this on or off, high or low, and then we have a relay clicking on whatever is connected to this. There are three connections for the relay. There's a normally closed and normally open connection or a screw terminal thingy and I have to find out which one is which. There's a line here, the center tab goes to the left side and this one is closed, so I'm pretty sure that's the normally closed one. And the other side is the one that's normally open. So let's try to get the USB cable inside here. I have a little bag wrapped around the Arduino just to prevent things from shorting. So let's quickly test the theory that I've chosen the right normally open port by plugging in the power and then right I'm turning it on and it's not glowing so that's probably a good thing let's plug in the USB cable but before I do that I'm gonna check if I have soldered everything up in there correctly and that there's no short on the five volts and ground so right now this one is doing its blinking orange thing and you probably can't see this, but when I touch a button, it turns pink. So this is a very bad example for showing you how it works. Let's see if the matrix is mapped right. That seems to be the case. Nice. And we don't have any ghosting because we used the diodes. Just to test the analog sticks, I'm gonna add them to the code and then change the color to t of the buttons to test it. The analog values are probably 10 bits, so we have to compress them and it's just best to use the map function. I'm just gonna guess that it's that way. Ah, see, I'm mapping the buttons to a color that doesn't make sense, so let's replace that. I'll just put in red, green, blue. All right, so <laughs> everything is black. Could be mapping. Probably it's just mapping. At this point, I could probably just Google it. Some things do follow logic. So maybe it's just, hey, this is the value. This is what the value is expected to be in range. And then this is what I want it to look like when, I, when we're done with it. So doesn't work. I actually forgot to tell it 
to use the functions. Hopefully when I upload this and turn this one here, I will get a red keyboard. Ooh. <laughs> Relay output, number one. And we're telling Arduino that it's an output again. We have a very long timer and telling it that it is millis in the start. And then we are telling it if millis minus timer relay equals, no. We could run past it. So never use equals in a millis thing. You can always run past millis and timer relay if you just say it has to be 5,000. So we wanna be bigger than 5,000 because it could be 5,001 when you get there. So if we are doing this, then let's just use a toggle. We are telling it boolean relay on is false. If relay is on, we're telling it to be high and then we always want to target it, so it doesn't make sense to be in the if. Relay port, relay output low. 5000 is a bit much because we want to see it blink. So I'm going to use a second. So we're uploading, and now we're blinking. I'm using the LED pin, so technically if you just want to have a relay that's turning on and off for a second, you can just use the blink script. I think I made that joke in the last episode. We can also use the map function, but we want to say, yeah, we, we can tell it to have an offset. So we can have it set to 300. Now we have relay time and we're using it instead of the 1000. This is longer. And now let's make it go insane a bit. I'm scared. Who needs cars if you can make something blink fast? Yes, I want to turn that way. The last step is um, to create this little tiny game or whatever you want to call it. And this is what I came up with. If the relay is on and the time runs out, I want to, the relay to be turned off. If in any of those cases, the right button is pressed. I want to turn on the relay and also reset the timer. It doesn't really matter to the state machine of this thing to know if the relay is turned on or off. You just want, whenever you push the right button, you want to reset the timer, turn on the relay, and then you're good. And we say that the next button that has to be pressed to keep going um, is another random number. For the random part to work, you have to call the function random seed on the analog pin um, that is not being used. So be sure that you use analog input four. Let's just check it out. Let's just try it. The code is uploaded. And when I push this button, the lights should turn on. And after a while, they should turn off again. Nice. So let's try to keep it on. And if I'm too slow, ah, I missed it. It turns off. You can also make a game out of it. This still sets the timeout for the buttons. No. No. <laughs> ah. So here we have it, a 16 button random keep alive switch with LEDs and potentiometers. That kind of looks like a MIDI controller, which I might turn it into at one point. So maybe you think, hey, that's a four x four matrix of LEDs. I can make a binary clock of it. If you have any ideas what else I could switch or what else this might be useful for, let me know in, on the Element 14 community. That's all we got for today. Have a nice one. See you next time. Auf Wiedersehen.